All right, welcome back to your media family. Today, we are on day two of wiring. Day one, I got all of the holes cut in the ceiling, and now I need to cut even more holes in the ceiling and in the wall to fish all of the wiring from the rear of the room to the front of the room. Because this is kind of a side project, typically with customers, we'll come in with a crew and just knock all this out all in a few days. But in this circumstance, it's gonna happen over time because I'm gonna do it all myself. So enough talking, let's get into the wiring. All right, guys, let's go ahead and start out with the tools. First things first, you're gonna need a stud finder. This one is from Franklin Sensors, and you can get it on Amazon. I've used this one for years, really enjoy it. It's pretty dang accurate. The only thing is, is it doesn't pick up water lines, electrical, plumbing, which some of my other stud finders do. But this one's affordable and gets the job done. You just need to be careful when you're cutting your holes to avoid any particular hazards. All right. You're gonna need a drill, a pretty powerful drill in order to get through your studs. And then after that, you are going to need a set of fish rods. And you can pick these up at Home Depot or Lowe's. Fish rods are great. You can attach as many as you need together. They're flexible and at the same time, they're rigid. So it's the perfect combination for running wires. In addition to that, you're gonna need a hole saw. You can use a manual version like this, or you can use an automatic battery powered option. I always just use the hardwired option because these are super cheap and everybody has access to them to keep the budget down. This is a single gang template essentially. Um, this is something you may wanna pick up if you're doing a retro because a lot of the times when you're running wire, you can use a single gang hole to get into the wall and then just cover that with a blank plate or use it as a pass through plate for additional wiring, which you're gonna to see me do on the full installation video of this home here. Another thing that you're really going to want is some electrical tape just for attaching your wires and running it around to the different places within the walls. All right guys so as you can see I just checked stud placement and I'm going to cut a hole right here a test hole and it needs to be big enough for me to fit my big hammer drill up in there to drill up through the framing. Little pro tip guys, when you're cutting holes, it doesn't matter how big you make the hole, it's still gonna be pretty much just as difficult to patch the hole, regardless if it's a tiny little hole or a giant hole, because the whole wall has to be repainted to really make it match properly anyways. So don't feel like you're being overly intrusive by cutting a big hole, it's just gonna make your job easier getting through the thick framing at the top of the wall. tip guys when you do cut out sheetrock save the drywall don't push it into the wall hang on to it it will make the sheetrock repair guys job a lot easier it's called a pumpkin cut you can just place it right back in bed and texture and paint over it all right now these here are called fish rods and they're flexible yet stiff enough to where you can run wire through the wall pretty easily i'm just going to check and see what kind of framing we have in this wall here because a lot of the time there's a fire break which essentially means that you need to cut more holes. All right, and we are hitting our first fire break. And it looks like the fire break is right about here. So that gives me a good reference point as to where I can check with my stud finder and then check um, where I want to cut my hole so that I can drill through that fire break. Okay, so as you guys can see here on the wall, I have marked out where the stud is. And you can see, if you look up, I'm directly in line with my hole up there. So this is where my fish rod hit. What I'm going to do is cut a single gang hole right here. Single gang meaning one single outlet like this. Um, there's dual gang, triple gang, quad gang, but I'm gonna use single gang because I got a bunch of retro boxes that'll allow me to bring my wires in, a retro ring like this and a plate like this which will keep everything nice and clean. And all these small parts we sell here at Dream Media. All right, and for all you guys out there that may not be cutting single gang holes on the, the regular, you can get this plate from Home Depot or Lowe's and it imprints on the wall a single gang hole. <laughs>
All right, guys, so now that we have drilled through the fire break, the next step is going to be getting my fish rod through that fire break from my upper hole. And the reason we run the fish rod first is because then we know for sure we're good to go and we can attach our wires to the other end of the fish rod. So I'm dealing with a combination of spray and foam insulation as well as uh, standard insulation. So it makes it a little bit more tricky. Okay, so now I have my fish rod down the wall, tried to stay closer to the inside, and it should be right here next to my hole that I drilled. I did a inch and a quarter so that I can fit my fingers in there and grab it. You could also shoot the wire straight up, but my guess is it's gonna get stuck in that spray and foam insulation. We are gonna drill through <laughs> the framing over here so that we can run the wire for our subwoofer, our RGB lighting, and the speaker wire. So in this particular circumstance, we have a stud here and we have a stud here. So what I'm gonna try to do is use fish tape, which is a little bit flexier than a fish rod. And I'm gonna drill through both studs and fish it between the two. All right guys, so I'm having a hard time getting this wire through the wall. What I'm doing is I actually removed two of the conductors out of the 14-2 uh, Romax, just the positive and neutral. And I twisted them together because it was just a little bit too thick and not sharp enough to get through that foam insulation. So what I'm doing now is trying to just finesse it through this hole here and this hole here. And I got a light on this side. So I'm gonna just very gently wiggle this wire in and try to see if it's possible. Grab it, just like that. So now I know that I can get my wire from here to here and now I'm gonna work on the next stud bay. And I'm gonna continue to do this <laughs> along this entire wall. I haven't decided if I wanna do them all up top behind the snowboards or if I wanna take them down at ground level. I'm thinking right now I'm gonna keep them up top because even if I get rid of the snowboards, acoustic treatments are gonna go here. It doesn't hurt to have some extra lights, guys, um, just so that you can get in the wall and see what you're doing. These were ordered on Amazon for very inexpensive. When you're cutting holes, guys, you always want to try to line up the holes you cut with the other outlets in the room. So in this circumstance, you got eight and a half inches from the baseboard to the outlet. I'm going to go eight and a half inches on this one as well, right there. And then I'm going to check my studs again. Perfect. Now I know I can cut my hole right here. take my fish rod. This is a fish hook. Probably use this up in the ceiling trying to grab the different wires. But for this here, fish rod will work perfect. Straight down the wall. Okay. We got the fish rod here. So that's a really good sign. Hopefully the only fire breaks that we have are right here to this room. Um, but now I can run my wire from all the way up here at the top of the ceiling, all the way down here to the baseboard of my termination point. All right, guys, we are moving along. Got through our fire break down there as well as some really thick framing. It was structural down here. Tried to drill small hole possible too, so I don't impact the structural integrity of the home. But now, one of the hardest parts of wiring is the headers because they're double stacked two by sixes or two by fours, depending on the wall that you're working with. But there will be two layers, so it's a lot to get up through that. So I'm going to start with a heavy duty nail killer bit here so I can just rip right through. And this is where it's nice 
to have this big hole because you can get your drill way up in there. And that is where it pays off to have the right equipment, guys. You got heavy duty hammer drill here, and then a top of the line wood drilling bit that can eat through nails. Some of these things that you're gonna see in this video, you may want to hire one of our preferred installers. We're in 28 states right now, so if you're not wanting to DIY it, give us a call and we'll get you hooked up with a local pro, because they have all this stuff on their truck ready to rock and roll. Okay, so we're cranking now, guys. We're up through our, our header up here. I'm gonna hollow it out a little bit more, and then I'm gonna have to drill through this stud here because we got framing literally right here. Actually, there's a little bit of space above where I might be able to stick my hand up and over the stud. So I'm gonna try to just get the fish rod up in there and see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna start running some of my wires. I'm gonna run speaker wire for my surround speaker that may go over here down the line. And then I'm gonna run my coaxial RG6 for my sub. And that way I can free up a fish rod. I only have one set here at the house. Okay. And then as you can see, you can just pull the, after you electrical tape your wire, you can just pull it right up the wall with ease, like that. All right, now I'm gonna be unboxing the Focal 300 series IW6. Safety instructions, cut out template for tracing out the wall and cutting it. And then we have a grill, and this is a paint guard in case you would like to install the speaker before the walls are painted. This is really nice because everything's ready to rock and roll whenever you're in those final steps of construction. This is the speaker itself. Magnesium, aluminum, inverted dome tweeter that is rotatable. Uh, crystal clear highs here. Really rigid, highly responsive, six inch woofer, flax cone. You got hi-fi, mid-level adjustments here. And wait till you see how easy it is to install this speaker. Now that I've cut my hole, next I'm gonna drill up to where my pass-through plate is up here behind where the snowboard's gonna be and run my wire through all of this framing. All right guys, right now I'm trying to get the wire from the speaker hole out to this other hole so that I can then attach more speaker wire to this line and pull it with this group over, up and over with all the other wires. All right, now I'm running our rear surround speaker up and I'm gonna attach it with all the other speaker lines that are running through this wall here. All right, guys, we are moving right along. As you can see, we got our wiring for the right rear side of the room, and now we're gonna work on the left side of the room, running all of these wires. First, we're gonna trace out the hole for the 300 series in wall six, cut it, get the wire ran over along with all of our RGB lighting for this back side, and don't forget about our subwoofer RG6 cable. So what I'm going to do is just drill through um, and reinstall another power outlet down here. I could also pop out the refrigerator and drill through down below. If it comes out easy, I'll go that way. If not, I'll just drill through this guy. 
All right, so it looks like the power outlet is under here and the unit slipped out easy. So since tile is a little harder to work with, I'm gonna go up with the outlet down below on the sheet rack. All right guys, the next step on this back wall is gonna be two things. We're going to be running the wiring and cutting the hole for the RG6 subwoofer cable, as well as installing power for the subwoofer cable. All right, back down here in the garage, guys. I'm gonna be getting into my electrical box here and grabbing some components for an outlet. So we're gonna need a couple different things. We're gonna need a blue box, a single gang receptacle. This keeps everything up to city code. And then we're gonna need a power outlet. Just a standard power outlet is sufficient. And then we're gonna need a plate cover. And then I have the Romax upstairs. The last thing I need is a wall plate cover right here. I have a wall plate, I have the outlet receptacle itself, the back box, and the Romax, and that should be sufficient. I have the low voltage stuff for the RG6 upstairs. All right guys, this is an outlet tester here. I'm gonna kill the power to right here at the bar so that I can relocate this power outlet. You just plug it in and it confirms that first it's wired right, <laughs> which is the first place it's the start which you would hope that everything's wired right, but sometimes it's not. Check to make sure it's wired right, and then trace the line back to the breaker, kill the breaker, and uh, relocate the power. I'll show you guys how to do that in just a moment. All right, everything's good to go. All right, so breaker number 16, upstairs loft, powder bath is now dead. Let's go back upstairs and get to relocating. All right, guys, I'm getting super lucky. So sometimes you actually have to run another dedicated circuit back to your breaker whenever you're hooking up a home theater system just due to power constraints. Luckily in this situation, I have a 15 amp here on the uh, bar area that I'm gonna pull over for this subwoofer, which is really demanding. 16 ultras are just ridiculous. And then the other one that's for this whole side wall, um, basically this whole room is gonna be um, on its own 15 amp. And then the equipment, which, you know, the projector is going to pull a little juice as well as the amplifiers and all that is going to sit on this other wall, which is actually tied to bedroom number four, um, which works out perfect. So I got three different 15 amp circuits to work with and everything in this house is LED. So I should be good to go as far as power is concerned. So power is dead here. I'm going to go ahead and tap off and move it on over. All right guys, just relocated my power from here to here. Now I just gotta strip everything back and terminate the ends. Power is really simple. Black is hot, white is neutral, and then you got your ground. All three are 100% required and you can't mess it up, but it's pretty rudimentary stuff. Uh, I made outlets on how to relocate power outlets in the past. I'm not gonna put a ton of emphasis on it this time, but yeah, just popping right over to the location where our subwoofer can be plugged in. As you can see, we got two yellow lights. That means that we are good. Everything is wired correctly.
sometimes when you get to the edge of the stud with these bits and the hammer drill, it can literally rip your arm off. So this is an impact driver, which won't do that. It just kicks right back internally inside the motor. So I'm gonna use this to get through the last bit of the stud. So now we are through the stud here. So now on to the next stud bay. All right guys, this is another circumstance where I have a load supporting beam. Uh, there's several two by sixes or two by fours stacked in the wall when you run into this. If you can, you can just avoid it completely rather than having to drill through four beams or one giant support beam in the house. I want to avoid it because I don't want to mess with the structural integrity of the home. Um, so just like down there, I'm going to do the same thing right here, which it's going to be hidden by the snowboards and down the road acoustic treatments anyways. So moving on. I have a little bit of wire left, Romax wire from all the other ground and neutrals that I pulled out, which are right there in the wall. So I'm just gonna pull out a little bit more. The rest of the wire, the ground wire, use this to fish between these two areas. use that last piece to go from here to here. Okay. All right, same thing here, guys. I'm gonna drill through at an angle and single game here. When this is all done, all the wire should be hidden completely behind the snowboards. And more importantly, if I do decide to do acoustics back here, it's keeping everything inside the wall. What I'll do on these particular channels, if I do do acoustics that are gonna sit flat, is I will cut out a little channel in the sheetrock that'll put it inside the wall so everything sits flush. And the acoustics in this space, especially once the furniture's in here, or when the furniture wasn't here, it sounds pretty decent for a flex space. And then whenever you put down these automated shades, they're fabric, so it absorbs a lot of the reverb that we're getting off of the glass. But we'll see, we'll do an acoustic analysis analysis, run some calibrations and room correction and see what we're left with. That'll be way down the road. <laughs> so stay tuned for that, guys. Cat 6, shielded, RGB, speaker 14.2, shielded, RG6, coaxial for the subwoofer, shielded, all of these lines like so. almost a day in or two days in officially on this wiring job and installation got the in ceilings put in and just running my additional speaker wires over my goal today is to be able to get all of the speaker wire up to here and then the next step is going to be fishing these over to here and then down this wall
All right, guys, so to get around this corner here, I already drilled through the top of the header, which is two two by fours. And then there's a little gap between the roof and the studs that are running this way, holding up the plywood and the roof and everything. So I'm gonna try to take my fish hook and hook some Romax electrical cable that I have in there. Just have it coiled up right here so that I should be able to hook it and grab it and then attach the lines of my electrical tape and pull it all through. Wish me luck. Patience, and it looks like I got it. This fish hook really paid off for me. All right, that was some of the most difficult aspects of this installation. The next one, we're just shooting the line from this speaker hole here to that speaker hole over there. Same thing on this one. So those ones should run straight down. Plus there's some attic access up in there, um, or not technically access, but there's attic up in there. So um, I won't be able to get in there, but I'll be able to get my phone and camera and look in there and see what's going on, which will make it pretty easy, hopefully. extra cat six right here to the middle of the wall just in case i would like to mount a projector back here in a hush box and broadcast onto a screen i've also been thinking about doing like a motorized drop down in front of all of this including the doorway uh, that way i could do a b comparisons for shootouts just trying to think of all circumstances this is the first time in a couple years i've had a space that i could turn into a media room so kind of thinking of all different scenarios also running some rgb wire in case i want to light up the front of the subwoofers got our rg6 and then over here i got extra data and speaker wire like i said i might want to put a surround speaker right there as low as possible to the tile and then cat cable here in case i want to hardwire in as well as uh, potentially running rgb um, leds under here here and here just adding a little bit more ambiance the lighting in here is not awesome just can lights and then these little lights here all right next step we're gonna run all the lines from this hole over to this hole and then onto that hole and then we're gonna have to deal with the whole header situation going down to the termination point all right guys so let's talk about what we got so far we have two three four speaker wires and we have two rg6 wires and we have two cat six cables as well as an rgb wire so that's the surround backs the surrounds the rgb wire that's running through this whole system and then potential projector down the road a potential hardwired location over here uh, by the little bar nook area and then two subwoofers at the rear of the room what i'd like to do eventually is an all sealed system like uh two uh, SB16 uh, Ultras and two of the SB2000 Pros um, here at the front of the room. Um, it's going to be a long process, obviously. I'm just getting started with the pre-wire, but that's kind of my plan. So up above, what we're going to do is a total of six Atmos speakers, and I'm even going to run one extra cable for the voice of God in case I want to do RO3D down the road. So um, everything is going to be overkilled right? Never hurts to have some extra wires in place, guys. It's only whenever you don't have them. It's whenever you spend a fortune and will do anything to get it. So whenever you're working with my consultants, keep that in mind. Overwire and talk with them about all possibilities, even if you're not going to do it right now. So up here in the ceiling, these ones were actually wired from the builder as stereo audio because we were just going to have this as a pool table room and not do a theater because I thought I was going to be here short term. Change of plans, we're going to stay here a little bit longer. So I'm going to actually leave those terminations in place in case down the road I sell it and the next homeowner just wants to do a two channel system he'll have that ability and I'm going to run brand new 14 2 plenium wire up and over for all of the height channels in addition to the surrounds and fronts all right we're moving along
it out, guys. We got our line from our Atmos rears to our Atmos mids. Moving along. From here to the Atmos front right, height right, should uh, definitely be easy. That's what's next. All right, Dream Media family, that is our wrap on day two of the pre-wire. Again, this is on the side, so this is a real accurate walkthrough of what it would be like if you were to do it yourself. I even had my father-in-law help out a little bit with pulling some wires just to make it easier on me. Some of these particular moves that I'm using, guys, I've been in this industry 14 years now, uh, pretty much my whole life, and some of these moves that I'm using are very difficult. It may look a little easier on camera than it is in person. So if you don't have attic access, you may want to seriously consider hiring a pro. We do have preferred installers in 28 states that can help you run those wires and get everything hooked up so you're not all nasty like me. But if you are up to the challenge of DIYing it, I wish you luck and I hope that all of these videos that I'm making help you in getting the work done yourself. All right, guys. Well, that's a wrap on day two. I will be back day three to finish it up. Let me show you where we are finishing right now. All right, guys. So end of day two, we got our surrounds in or the wires in. I got extra wires over there for if I want to do a seven channel bed layer down the road. I'm thinking maybe put one there and one up here. For now, I got the wires ran, as well as extra cat, extra RGB, all that good stuff. Um, we got our subwoofers pre-wired, and then I got all my RGB and drilled through all the studs for the speaker wire, coax, all that good stuff. Got an extra line here, Cat 6, for um, projectors, if I wanna hook up a Balin and do some shootouts. And in addition to that, we got our line ran for our mid right, and our front right and our rear right Atmos. We're gonna have six Atmos speakers. And I'm actually gonna run the voice of God whenever I do these additional speakers here. So as far as the difficult stuff goes, we really just have one, two, three, four more speakers to go. And then we're on to the fun part, the actual, the front of the room. I know some of you guys may be wondering, Zach, why didn't you set it up this way? Well, feng shui guys, feng shui. We got the fireplace right here and it just, we we mapped it out it just wouldn't have been right if we wouldn't have had the seating back in this corner so unfortunately we're only gonna have a 120 inch screen but it's gonna be sweet all right guys stay tuned i will be back on day three here shortly all right dream media family day three of wiring my goal today is to finish up getting the rest of the wiring over that way I can start installing gear. Let's go.